I had to take a big sip because what in the world did we just watch? It took everything in me to finish watching this travesty of a part two. It took everything in me to get up on in front of this camera and do this recap. That's how annoyed, aggravated, frustrated I was. If you are a Monique fan, you're welcome to stay. Like you've been welcome to stay for all the other recaps. I'm just going to let you know that I will be going in on your girl who happens to be a sociopath because that's what we saw tonight. There is going to be some raised voices. You might be upset because what we saw on this part two was a clear sign of a woman who is void of any emotions, any accountability for her wrongdoings. So again, it's going to be real tight for Monique fans today. Um, let's just hop on into this, shall we? We start off this part two. Monique is saying that Jamal has been slinging his big D around Atlanta. I have to say, Giselle handled herself very well. Um, if she was rattled, she refused to let them see it. You could tell she was very aggravated, but she refused to crack um, in the face of adversity because Monique was really piling it on. So was Karen. Giselle says that she has been beyond transparent about Jamal's transgressions and about their marriage and why it failed. Okay. And she has, she has not denied it. Season one, episode one, she said that Jamal was a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater, and was always hiding his salami. Those were her exact words. She has been beyond transparent and open at the fact that um, Jamal cheated and that was the reason for their divorce. Andy and even Candace ask, so if this all comes out that it's true, what are you gonna do? And so Giselle's like, you know what? We're gonna cross that bridge if we should get there. And she's not giving them an answer one way or the other about what she's going to do if these, you know, rumors are true. Andy makes it a point to say that he thinks that it would be very stupid of Jamal to do this and be out here dating other women, knowing that you're on this show and knowing that you two have claimed that you are back together. And yeah, that makes total sense. Um, I don't believe that Jamal was still seeing other people. I just don't think that Jamal will be stupid enough to embarrass his family like that, especially knowing how his daughters have been apprehensive about him and Giselle getting back together. So yeah, I definitely do agree that Jamal has enough sense that he wouldn't just publicly embarrass her like that. And he cleared it up when he brought his binder out a few days ago that that relationship that he had with that young lady Monique is talking about, that was in the past. So <laughs> Monique, you gotta come a little bit harder than that. I have another question for Monique. Where was the binder tonight? I mean, yeah, we saw it make a few appearances in this episode in the way beginning, but how come she didn't have any more tea to spill? Was it just one page full of tea? because I was kind of surprised if I had a binder full of receipts on everybody on the cast, I would have been revealing them. I wouldn't have just sat there with one little page of notes. She didn't have anything in that binder except that old recycled stale tea that she has just been waiting to drop since Giselle has denied her friendship. So now the ladies are breaking for lunch. Everybody's going back to their rooms and we hear Monique telling Ashley that if they want to play dirty, well, she's going to get dirty. She's just running that stupid mouth of hers. And Giselle was absolutely right when she told Robin, girl, she is a binder loser. Like you have nothing better to do with your time than to <laughs> make a binder, an arts and crafts project. And her and Robin started joking about it. Um, Candace called it the thirst book and it is the thirst book because she was real thirsty to make sure that we all saw that stupid binder. Then we see the clown going into her room, the clown aka Monique Samuels. She's telling Chris that, you know, they've been trying to destroy her family and she's going to get them back. 
and Chris sitting up there agreeing with Monique. I said, Chris, if you don't sit your stupid behind, slew foot, marble mouth, ugly self down, trying to antagonize a whole bunch of women who haven't even done anything to you, then I know something. So now lunchtime is over and the ladies are back. They are waiting for Robin. They're all making jokes about how Robin is always late. Robin finally gets back. And now we are on the Ashley portion of this reunion. And you already know I'm about to get on Ashley. If you are an Ashley fan, this is the time where you can hop off the train because I'm about to go in on her too. So this part really kind of got on my nerves when Andy was like, you know, Ashley, I really feel bad that I have to ask you all these questions because you're pregnant. There have been so many pregnant housewives on these reunions and Andy has never cared that they were pregnant. He has never spared them because they were pregnant. So, you know, miss me with having all this grace and all this sympathy. She got to answer these questions and be on the hot seat like everybody else. So Andy also makes mention of the fact that Michael isn't there. And I thought that that was very interesting. And Ashley's like, oh, you know, he is at um, a wedding for um, one of his relatives in South Carolina. I said, child, he just didn't want to go because he knew he would be on the hot seat for all of his indiscretions and all of his nonsense. There is no wedding, especially not during COVID. So please stop. I do not ever want to see Ashley or Michael again. Do you all hear me? Do y'all hear the aggravation? Do y'all hear the exhaustion in my voice? I don't ever want to see those two again. So we watched the montage of Ashley and everything that she's been going through this season and the topic of her having postpartum depression comes into play. She goes on to say how she had postpartum for six months and, you know, she's um, worried about, you know, getting it again because she's expecting her second baby and how it, you know, took her a while to get back to herself. Andy asked the other women if they dealt with postpartum as well and they said they did. Um, and then we're on to the next question. So then they bring up the whole incident at Monique's lake house earlier this season about Wendy being upset when she saw Ashley had brought her baby. So Wendy talks about how she wasn't particularly mad at Ashley. It was just that she was triggered because she wanted her baby to be there and she was missing her baby since she saw baby Dean was there. That's all it was. And you could tell that Ashley's kind of not pleased with that answer. It was like, girl, all the nasty stuff that fly out of your mouth. So now we're at the part when we get to Michael and his big indiscretion with that woman at the hotel. The way Andy didn't press Ashley more about this really got on my nerves. She got off very easy, in my opinion. She was just saying that, you know, Michael and that woman did not sleep together. I said, girl, that's just a bold faced lie. I said, you gonna sit up here and play on people's intelligence like this? So then Andy is asking Ashley what she's gonna do if Michael should ever have another indiscretion again. And she says, I will divorce him if he does it again. She also says that it was easy to forgive Michael because when they were separated, remember when they were separated, like season two or season three? She said that while they were separated, she had a few indiscretions of her own and that she was having fun with other people as well. And Michael forgave her and they worked through it. I said, how is Michael forgiving you while you guys were separated? Because you know good and well that when you guys were separated, Michael was out there laying it low and spreading it wide with Lottie, Dottie, everybody. And on top of that, he kicked you out of the condo. When Andy asked if their marriage was open, she was like, no, our marriage isn't open. It's just that, you know, in the past, when me and Michael have um, been attracted to the same person, we just acted on it and slept with the person together. And then she makes sure to clarify that Michael isn't gay. He's only attracted to women. I said, okay, sweetheart, if that's what you want to believe, then I guess we'll go with it, but okay. So Andy asked a few more questions. He asked her if, um, Katie Ross and her ever had sex because Katie Ross said in a um, recent interview that she had sex with one of the housewives of Potomac. 
and they show a clip of them when they were like naked with the tassels on like season one and ash is like no that's not true at all because you know katie said that we had sex in a garage i don't even have a garage i live in a condo i'm like girl y'all could have been at an airbnb with a garage like I, you, I don't know why you're playing dumb. Don't you have a garage at your beach house in Delaware? So you could have been having sex there. I don't necessarily believe it. I think that her and Katie did hook up or do something. More power to them, but it's like, why lie? So before we are done with the Ashley portion, Andy brings up the clip that is floating around and that is of Michael grabbing another producer's ass from season one at Sharice's 50th birthday party. Remember that episode? So we can clearly see that Michael is squeezing and the guy kind of like, you know, jumps. He's kind of startled. And the way that Ashley ducked and dodged and was trying to weasel her way out of this was hilarious to me. It is clear as day that he did something wrong and that the producer was uncomfortable. And this woman gonna sit up here on national TV, look Andy Cohen in his eyes and just out and out lie. So Ashley says that the producer was calling Michael Zaddy and he was really flirtatious with Michael. I said, let me tell you something right now. No human being on this earth is physically or sexually attracted to Michael Darby, okay? That producer was not flirting with that man and he needs to stop it. Ashley, you would just tell she was lying. I, it, it was just like, girl, you are just gonna sit up here and just lie to the bitter end, huh? So Candace was jumping in and Candace was like, girl, like, stop it. Like, your husband's a creep, he did it. And she was getting mad, like, he, he did not do anything wrong. Robin and Giselle confirm that this is what they were talking about last year. And so Ash is getting upset. Well, you know, that can't be because the producer was laughing and he liked it. And they're just kind of like, no, like, girl, he clearly told us and he told everybody on the staff that he was very uncomfortable by Michael and Michael's advances. Andy then confirms what he heard. And he's like, yeah, the producer said that he was not pleased and he did not like when Michael touched him. So Ashley's sitting up there just looking like the true fool that she is. Andy did not press Ashley on this enough for me. The way that I would not have let this go until Ashley gave me an acceptable answer for Michael's predatory ways, we would have been there for three hours before we moved on to the next topic because the way my foot would not have gotten up off of her neck. Andy is so annoying when he just wants to give certain housewives a pass and doesn't press them on certain things. He should have pressed Ashley way more on that. That could be a sexual harassment suit against Bravo. Like, it's like, are you not concerned enough about your network, about your show? Like, that's not cool. People out here getting their behinds grabbed by this predator. So the next lady that we move on to is Miss Karen Huger, another person that I can no longer stand. Andy starts off asking Karen if she is happy to be back in Potomac. She says that she's happy, she loves it, Ray is happy, and Ray has taken up tennis with his friends and some of their neighbors. So he's just ecstatic. Then Andy goes on to ask Karen about her time in Surrey, Virginia. And um, she just says that, you know, it was nice being back. Um, Giselle chimes in at this point and says that it was nice to see Karen as herself. It was like the first time that she had seen Karen just like herself and like normal and not all this foolishness and pop and circumstance. Ashley says the same thing, that it was nice to see Karen um, not with all of the grand dame and not all that pretentious stuff that she does when the cameras are usually on. They really pressed Karen um, for about a good five, 10 minutes about her attitude in general. You know, Giselle goes on to say that Karen is actually fun off the cameras. Ashley expresses the same sentiments and Karen is kind of sitting there and she's kind of like, 
She doesn't really want to hear it, but it's the truth. You can tell that Karen really has a lot of insecurities, I feel. I feel that Karen still feels that she has something to prove to people as well. I think that she she has a habit of lying. Andy even called it out when he said it was nice seeing you um in Surrey and seeing like you know your true person come out. He addresses that she's been full of BS for the past five years of being on this show and she kind of got defensive and he's like no Karen like every time I've tried to ask you about the hard things in your life about you know your money problems your tax issues why you moved out of Potomac you've always had an excuse you've always had some sort of word salad about why things are the way they are instead of just coming out with the truth. You haven't been an open book. So now at this point, Andy goes on to ask Karen about that whole drunk moment that she had when she was with Candace and Wendy um, at Monique's lake house and how she was letting the truth fly about how um, she wants her money back from Ray, how she supported him through his tax woes. And then before she can answer, Robin interrupts and is like, Karen, how come when I asked you about the whole fireball moment and how you got drunk that night, you didn't want to answer me, you were dismissive. And she's like, I wasn't dismissive, I was just hung over. It's like, see, you can never just be truthful about anything. All you could have said was, you know what, Robin, you're right, I was dismissive, I'm sorry, whatever. Karen has a very funny relationship with the truth, even with the little things, it drives me nuts. So Andy, asked Karen what she thought about Robin in that clip saying that Karen has a disdain for Ray's penis. And she's like, yeah, what a disgusting, you know, question. Like, of course, you know, I don't have a disdain for my husband's penis. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, let's move on. So now we get into the moving parts of Karen and Ray's marriage because that was on display. Andy starts asking Karen about what did Ray think when she was talking about how she wants her money back after she helped him with the tax issues. Well, Karen says that Ray was asking her how much did he owe her after he watched that clip. And she was like, oh, you know, I was just joking. Like Ray has been such a great husband to me. I've actually been a very spoiled wife for the past 17 years, to be honest with you. You know, he has supported me financially and emotionally and, um, mentally and all that so you know he really doesn't owe me anything we are married i said girl you know you want that money back so we don't even have to front but okay girl okay so andy starts talking about how ray had said in earlier episodes that the fame has gone to karen's head and um you know she's famous now and she now has a Bloomingdale's um, deal with her perfume. And he goes around to ask if the other ladies have noticed changes in their marriages since they've been on this show for some time and they're making good money being on this show. So Robin answers and she's like, you know, well, me and Juan got a 50-50 relationship. I said, okay. <laughs> We, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day and folks argue on Twitter about it. I'm not going to give my opinion on what I think about 50-50 relationships, but I digress. <laughs> so she's like, I never want to emasculate Juan. I never want him to feel bad since I'm on this show. So of course, Monique has to interject and she says, this little check that I'm making from Bravo is nothing compared to the money that my husband brings in because he's still bringing in that coin. So Andy is like, you mean what he used to make? And she's like, no, he's still bringing in the same checks that he was making when he was playing football. And she's talking about how his investment portfolio is just doing amazing. All I have to say about that is time will tell and we shall see. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So now there's a little break in the conversation and you hear Monique say, you hear Candace taking little shots at me. I was like, girl, shut the entire F up. When I tell you I have never wanted to jump through a TV screen, like it took everything in me to finish watching this reunion, y'all. Like even doing this recap, I'm only doing this for y'all because this is painful. This is painful. We're going to finish getting through this, okay? 
So we are at the Monique portion of this reunion. Andy starts it off light and fun. And he talks about Monique's annoying, stupid bird that has not made her any more interesting at all. Then Andy addresses T'Challa flying away. And they show the video clip of Monique crying in her car trying to find T'Challa. So Andy cites this really funny Vulture article that was circulating around when Monique's bird had mysteriously disappeared. And he's like, well, this Vulture article claims that it's actually impossible for your type of bird to fly away and then to come back. And Candace is like, that bird did not fly anywhere. I am definitely in agreement with Candace. I believe that Monique did that little stunt for attention. Andy brings up their time at the lake house and how when they were playing that couples game, Chris made that really crass and tasteless joke about Monique giving him oral sex. And Monique was like, I'm not offended. I was not offended by that. That was just really funny. You know, my husband is a whole clown. I said, you got that right. You are married to a clown and you're, you're a clown too. Two clowns together. Two clowns who need to be in the circus, but I digress. So she's trying to laugh it off. Candace is like, I was disgusted when I saw that. Monique quips, you know, your husband said that you were bipolar. And Candace, as always, brings it on home with a TKO and says, and that's why your husband told national TV that you were a concubine. And Monique has nothing to say. I said, Candace, you better get her. Get her, please. <laughs> so you already know that we got to talk about this infamous plot with Monique, the trainer, and Chase's paternity. Monique is adamant that Giselle was discussing this plot. Giselle is like, um, we were not discussing the plot. The only thing I said on TV was the rumor because the producer asked me but we were not discussing the plot. Giselle also lets it be known that this is a rumor that has been circulating around the DMV for years now. Giselle also lets it be known that everybody knew about this and it was never brought to national TV. The only thing that was brought up on air was when Giselle said in her confessional episode two of this season that the rumor was Monique was fooling around with her trainer and Big Boy found out about it. That was all Giselle said. Andy even co-signed what Giselle said and said, Giselle is right. This rumor was never brought to air. Monique sounded like such an idiot when she said, well, y'all can just believe what y'all want. It's not about believing what you want. We all saw with our own eyes that this rumor was never brought to air. How are you angry at somebody when the rumor was never brought on air? Giselle was right when she said, yes, we did talk about this whole rumor and all this foolishness behind the scenes, but we never brought it on air. She was right. People do gossip. People do talk. Giselle was clear that she was not running around town spreading this rumor either. It was already around town for two years. Monique, you even said it on your IG Live that you had heard about this rumor circulating around town for over two years and you chose to do nothing about it. So for you to try to expose Giselle and be upset with her, you are absolutely insane. If you were so angry about this rumor and if Giselle was allegedly trying to spread it around town, then why were you trying to befriend her seasons three, four, and five? 
Your logic and the math doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Your timeline of events doesn't make sense. No Monique fan has been able to answer that simple question that how come y'all's fave was still trying to befriend Giselle even though she knew about this rumor circulating for two years and supposedly knew that Giselle was going around spreading it. Y'all have yet to answer that question because y'all just want to stand for her so bad that you are just devoid of all logic and reason. Another hole in Monique's story. If you were so angry about this rumor, why didn't you go upside Gigi's head? Why didn't you confront her? If you claim that Gigi, your ex-best friend who we saw film a few scenes in season two, started this rumor and went around to your castmates and told them this and tried to feed it to everybody in the DMV, then why didn't you go upside her head? It's not making sense. If I knew that somebody was spreading around a crazy rumor that I claim wasn't true, I would go directly to the source and confront them about it and tell them to stop. Why are you attacking everybody else except Gigi? Let's, let's, let's start there. Because you guys refuse to address the real issue. Let's get to the root of the matter. If you are so angry. Why are you hitting Candace? Why are you trying to expose Giselle? Why are you running out of the room when Sharice comes in if she was also a part of the plan? We watch the montage of the buildup between Monique and Candace. A viewer's question that Andy reads is, Monique, if you were so angry at Sharice, then why were you hugged up with Sharice at Ashley's baby shower months before filming? Monique says, now this is a bold faced lie. Monique says, I did not speak to her the whole time there. I just was in that picture because we had to take a picture together. If I don't like somebody, if I have a deep hate for somebody, if they were allegedly trying to destroy my family and destroy my marriage, there is no way in hell that I would be hugged up right next to them, taking a picture with them. So your story's not making sense because if you were in the picture with her, you would have been on the other side, but you're right next to her, hugged up with your arm around her. Charisse is not even a cast member, so you're not even contractually obligated to take a picture with her. So your excuse is absolute BS. I don't believe it whatsoever. Monique, you just continue to lie and lie and lie some more. It is so crazy. And Robin was right when she told you, you know, you shouldn't even let Sharice have all this power over you. And you shouldn't. You so big and bad with everybody else, but you not big and bad with Sharice. Sharice is from Southeast DC she would have worn you all the way out and you know it. And that's why you ran out of the room like a bat out of hell when she was at Ashley Sip and See. I really can't stand people like you. You're just a coward. You just pick on people that you feel that you can just beat on because you think that Candace is a weak link. You think she's an easy target. That's the only reason why you went after her. You're a coward and you're a loser. So they bring up Candace's anniversary party where she invited um, Sharice as well. And Giselle and Robin are like, there was no malice on Candace's part when she invited Sharice because she really had no idea that Monique and Sharice were on the outs. Here come Karen's raggedy behind talking about how Candace's motives were questionable. When I tell you I am just officially over Karen, so then we talk about the whole fire pit moment and why was Monique so annoyed with Candace for not coming out? So Monique comes up with a convoluted answer to that. Well, you know, because when I saw it back, I was like, yeah, you overreacted, but it was just a buildup. It was just a buildup. I was like, Candace wasn't even the only one who wasn't there for the fire pit. Ashley and um, Giselle were also not there at the fire pit. So why were you only angry at Candace? Let me tell you something right now. Monique had her claws sent on 
Candace the entire time. She is angry about that messed up marriage to that big slew footed man. And she is angry about just a lot of things. She's angry that she's not Giselle's friend. She is just so angry and has so much rage in her. She wanted to take her anger out on Candace and she had her eyes set on Candace this entire season. She was always planning to get Candace in some way, shape or form. She is just laser focused on Candace for some reason. Whatever Candace did, she was gonna find fault in it just for whatever she did. When Candace tried to disengage from their argument at her lake house, she was angry at that. Candace couldn't win either way. It was like, it was just set up for her to just lose. We get into this assault because Monique assaulted Candace. Let's just keep it real. That was not a fight, that was an assault. Monique says, I just need to figure out what she did to me to make me snap. I'm already like, this girl is a psychopath. Candace is, you could just tell Candace is just livid. She's just sitting there quiet. You know, she's just, you already know she's gonna cry and I would be crying too. Cause like the way I wanted to just give her the biggest hug, cause I just felt so bad for her. Monique says, now she says this on national TV, knowing that we've already seen the footage, knowing that we saw what happened, knowing that we all have working eyes. So Monique says that she just blacked out because Candace started it and put her hand under her chin. Now, mind you, Monique started playing and flipping her hair, did she not? She did that first. Candace didn't even touch her chin. She did that. It didn't even come near her chin. Robin and Giselle and the rest of the ladies are like, that did not happen at all. Like she did not even touch your chin. She didn't come near your chin. When Monique was trying to say that she thought Candace pushed her first, girl, how could somebody push you when they're directly in front of you? And then when they cleared up the whole thing about um, Giselle's hand being on her shoulder and Giselle was like, girl, I did not push you. I was actually trying to stop you. That's how my hand was on your shoulder. And she was just trying to keep making excuses about that. She just can't help herself. I, I said Monique lives in an alternate reality. That woman refuses to take accountability for her piss poor actions. Monique then says that she threw the glass at her first. And they're all like, Monique, Monique, Earth to Monique, Monique, are we living um, in the same planet? That did not happen, my dear. She did not throw that glass at you first. So then she says, well, because my tooth was busted. And when I went to my doctor, I can show you the dental records. They're all like, that's not necessary, girl. She did not throw the drink at you First, she didn't throw a glass at you. The Candace has a broken glass in her hand because you have been banging her head on the table and she you know, couldn't even release the glass. Monique is sitting up there just lying and adamant at her version of events, which is an out and out lie. So Andy is like, but you said that you were gonna finish her off after the fight. And for every point that Andy made, she had an excuse to justify why she did it. She was like, well, you know, I said, hey, I might as well finish her off if um, I'm gonna be fired. Monique says, I had all the ladies over to meet up with them to just explain what happened and because I was just glad that nobody got hurt. And everybody's kind of like, nobody got hurt. Candace got hurt. Andy goes on to ask Candace, what was that like watching it? Was that hard to watch? Because I noticed that you didn't even want to watch it when we played the clip. And Candace is just, an emotional wreck and I completely understand because I would be emotional as well. Candace says, I don't even wanna talk about it. And she's just crying, like she's just so pissed. Like, you know that cry when you are just so angry, you, you just can't even just get the words out. That's how angry you are, you're just crying. 
Monique just as smug as she wants to be. And she's like, can I say something? Can I interrupt for a second? And Candace is like, girl, I don't want to hear your voice. And even Andy's like, Monique, like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Candace right now. I want her to answer. Like, you had your time. Please be quiet. Candace says, I'm still messed up about this whole thing. Um, Giselle then interjects and says, one thing that has really bothered me about this whole debacle is the fact that people have been so mean saying that Candace needs to get over it. And I completely agree. Candace does not have to get over this. I mean, this is pretty recent. Um, this is a traumatic event. Like not only was she assaulted on national TV by somebody that she called a very good friend, she now has this woman's crazy supporters harassing her day in and day out. All because Monique lied about the chain of events that occurred. And Monique still hasn't owned up to the fact that she started this whole entire thing and is dead wrong. So Monique is allowed to cry about things that happened to her 35 years ago when she was in middle school and the girls didn't like her. But Candace can't be upset and cry about the fact that she was assaulted on national TV by a friend. Got it, because that makes complete sense. Candace says that she just can't get over the mental effery that has taken place. She can't get over the fact that Monique has just lied on her, has lied about the series of events that occurred. Um, she's gotten her millions of fans to attack her on social media day in and day out, um, saying that she deserved it, saying that um, that's what she gets. She says, you know, I'm just confused on why this happened. I'm still confused. And I am too, because... In another live, Monique said that this fight had nothing to do with the rumors. So for Monique to get on here at this reunion and say that this fight had something to do with them spreading the rumors, girl, which one is it? Again, you are entangled by your own words because you are lying. One minute this fight didn't have anything to do with these rumors, the next minute it did. The next minute, you know, you're not friends with Sharice, you can't stand Sharice, but you're taking pictures with her at people's baby showers. The next minute, I knew about these rumors for two years, didn't pay them any mind, but now you're angry and on a war path and trying to expose people, the same people you were trying to befriend, even though you knew that they were allegedly spreading these crazy rumors around. Which one is it? You can't even keep your lies straight absolute madness. When Andy called Monique out for her smugness and her dryness, I said, that was absolute insanity to me. She was not remorseful at all. She looked like a true psychopath in that chair, defending her action, saying that, you know, I'm not upset. You know, I got through my emotions. I'm just fine. What we witnessed tonight was pure evilness. I really can't believe that I ever stand for this woman. I mean, I used to be the biggest Monique fan. To see how she is now conducting herself, this is sad. We are watching a true sociopath in motion. She's incapable of acknowledging her wrongdoing. She's incapable of taking accountability and responsibility. And she's incapable of showing emotion. Andy Cohen, there is no way that this show can move forward if she's back on for season six. I'm sorry, I will not be watching. Um, absolutely not. This was just so awful to watch. I, I, I was so angry just sitting up here, watch this girl lie and lie and lie. I really hope that Jamal will release the footage that he has of her husband verbally assaulting a woman in Safeway. And they say that the woman in Safeway was Sharice. I really hope that somebody from Safeway, if you're watching, please release that footage of Chris Samuels assaulting a woman in Safeway, please. Candace leaves and she's crying. She needs to take a moment to gather herself. I totally get it. Um, Monique then says that she's upset. I said, girl, shut up. Just save it. Just You, you already said you weren't upset. So now you're upset. Which one is it? We see a to be continued and we're going to see next week is the final reunion. And it is 90 minutes long. So help me, God. Um, we're going to see... Chris Samuels and making a true jackass out of himself trying to attack women. Y'all, 
like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you all think in the comments. Um, again, I'm not going back and forth with anybody in those comments. I said what I said and I meant every single word. See you all for a happier franchise, which is Atlanta. <laughs> Bye guys.